it's Mimsy here. Today I am going to show you how I made this huge Roman shade. So let's get started. Just started cutting this fabric and I have to cut one full width. This is one full width. Actually it goes this way. And this will go up the center. And then I have to cut one more full width like this the same length, but I'm gonna split that one in half and it'll go on each side of this full width. So I'll add another side to this and another side to this. But because I've got a pattern, I have to make sure that I cut this, keeping in mind that I have to match the pattern on each side. So what I did is I laid out my center and I went ahead and matched the pattern right here. So here's the pattern match and you can see that they don't line up right here. It's possible if you have a large pattern match that you may have to go like this far up to match your pattern. If you've got a 27 inch drop, which is common, you might have to you know, bring the second one all the way down here in order to cut your next width and then this piece here is all waste. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting for, you know, your side widths and you have a pattern. All right, so I've got my first piece already cut. I actually marked my second piece. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna follow this pattern across. My very first piece that I cut, this piece here, in order to get a nice straight square and on grain piece of fabric to start this project, I did pull a string. And I have a video about how you do that. I'll put a link to that video right here. So now I'm just gonna cut this fabric all the way across. And now I'm cutting this in half. Now I've got my middle full width and then the two side widths here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin these on matching the patterns. It's all pinned. So now I will take it to the sewing machine, sew it together. A couple weeks later, I have my seams sewn together. It's pattern matched, not perfectly, but it's pattern matched, okay? And then I put in my bottom hem and both my side hems on both sides. So what I did on this side is, what I've got here is a double two inch side hem. So if you open that up, I've got one inch here and one inch here. And then the bottom hem got a double, this is three inches, so double six inch bottom hem. You could go wider if you want, but so you see it's the same thing here. And you're gonna do the side hem first and then bring up your bottom hem because that way you still have a pocket here so that you can slide a um, weight bar in there, which can just be a dowel or something like that. So now what I need to do is cut my lining fabric to the uh, inside width of this. Now my lining fabric, I don't have to seam together my lining fabric because because it's a solid fabric, so I'll railroad that, which means I'm gonna run the lining fabric across side to side like this. Clearly I couldn't do that on this fabric, the face fabric, because it has a pattern, and I can't have my pattern running sideways on here. Now I'm gonna measure from inside here because my lining fabric is gonna get tucked under here, and lining fabric will get tucked under here, and then all the way to the top, and then I will stitch across here and stitch across here, and that will secure my lining fabric to my face fabric. All right, so I will drop that down. This is my side seam. I'm gonna open up that side seam and I'm gonna bring this lining fabric right to that edge there and right to the bottom edge here. And so this is one of the reasons why it's so important to have your fabric cut straight, square, and on grain. Okay, now I can refold that and we'll pin it down. I'll bring this all the way back. Just 
lining up this bottom edge with that very first crease of this double hem. So it's right down to the bottom. If you have any threads like that hanging out, coming from the braid bottom edge, cut those babies off because sometimes when the light's shining through, you can see those. Now I can take this baby to the sewing machine and sew all these seams. Just a U shape down the sides, across the bottom, and up the other side. I like to use my blind hem foot when I'm doing this type of top stitching so that I can stitch right next to the edge of the fabric and it makes a really, really nice, neat, it's basically an edge guide. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit, starting to push the fabric a bit. What happens because I don't have a walking foot, the bottom fabric is getting pulled through with the feed dogs faster than this top piece and so it will start to pucker. So you have to sort of help it through so it doesn't get uneven at times. It's starting again. You see how it's starting to kind of lift up there? So we need to just push that back. And it does create a tiny little pucker there. Look at, so, but you can't even see it. But that's the beauty of a walking foot is that won't happen. See, it's starting to get, starting again. And that's why a lot of pins are helpful too, because if you didn't have enough pins in there, this wouldn't happen because you wouldn't have the pin there to keep that and you wouldn't know and you'd get all the way to the other end and you'd have a really off seam. So you can sort of see a tiny little pucker there, tiny little pucker right there, but I'm gonna press this and that will be completely unnoticeable. I'm gonna give it a good press so that it's nice and flat. And then I will go to Home Depot and buy a one by two in order to mount it on the one by two. Next up is putting in the rings. So you see here, I've started marking my vertical spacing. I just use a tape measure and a pencil to make a little tiny crosshairs on there exactly where I'm gonna sew on my rings. So as a general rule, when you're sewing on your rings, you sew the first row right at the edges, the right and left edges of your Roman shade, two inches in from the edge. I oftentimes just sew it right at the seam there that I've created with my side seams but two inches is the general rule. And then for the rest of your spacing, your horizontal spacing, so from left to right on the Roman shade, you want to space your rings generally nine to 11 inches apart, left to right. And then vertically, so up, up the shade, top to bottom, you wanna do your spacing generally about six to eight inches, depending upon how deep you want your, your folds. When you're figuring out exactly how many spaces you're going to be able to get on your shade left to right. If you have a wide shade like this, then you would want to subtract the two inches from the left side, two inches from the right side, figure out what you've got left, and then divide that evenly between nine and 11 inches approximately across your shade. For this shade, because it's so wide, I had nine horizontal rows of rings. So I placed mine about nine inches apart. And the, the smaller you make your horizontal spacing, the straighter your shade will be. If you place your rings really far apart, you're gonna get a bit of a swag in your shade or a smile, which if you have a narrow window and you're only gonna put rings on each side of your shade in order to create that swag or that smile, that's, that's a definite style. And if that's what you're going for, that by all means, space your rings far apart so you get that smile. But I wanted mine to be very square and straight. Okay, so to attach the rings, I use button thread. You could use just whatever good thick thread you have, upholstery thread would be fine. And what I did is I, you need to cut a length to reach from the top to the bottom of your shade. So I'm measuring top to bottom, 
and then I went ahead and cut all nine of my lengths of my button thread just to do it in assembly line fashion. All right, so go ahead and thread up a good size needle with your button thread or your upholstery thread. And then you're gonna, and you don't need to tie a knot in the bottom of the thread. So you're gonna start at the top of your shade and you're gonna pick up your both layers of fabric with your needle. Um, pull the thread through and leave yourself uh, about a five inch tail at the top just hanging out then go down to your next crosshairs down and pick up both layers of fabric with just one single stitch just make sure that you're going through both layers and then continue down the shade and hit each of your crosshairs just pick up both layers with one single stitch straight down to the bottom of your shade. When you get to the bottom of the shade, that last crosshair is there, you're gonna pick up your same single stitch, both layers of fabric, but this time you are gonna grab your rings and you're gonna go ahead and drop one of those rings onto the needle and you're gonna just do a couple stitches around that ring. So just do two or three stitches and then tie that ring off. So, and actually what I did here is I tied the ring on before I did the couple stitches, but either way works. You can either tie it a couple square knots and then put a couple stitches around it, but either way works. You just wanna make sure that that bottom ring is very secure because that bottom ring does all the work. The rest of the rings are kinda of just guides, but that bottom ring holds all the weight of lifting and lowering the shade. So just make sure the bottom ring is very secure. And then the next step is to cut in between all the rings so you've got just a little strip of the string or button thread in order to drop your rings onto and then you just tie the rings off with a couple square knots and I think I might have done three square knots two square knots is good and then they're they're good and secure and so you just tie off all the rings onto all of your rows of rings. It's a lot, but with this method, it makes it really, really quick. And then trim down the strings to about a half inch tail. You don't wanna cut them super short. And here's a close up of the stitches on the front side of the shade. They're almost imperceptible if you just pick up a couple little threads when you're when you're sewing on your rings and even if you don't it doesn't matter because they're going to be in the folds anyway you won't see it that is a lot of rings to tie okay so i used a one by three pine board that i bought at home depot it was like three dollars and that's what I'm gonna mount my Roman shade on. So right now I'm taking a little bit of drapery lining that I had cut off, and I'm just wrapping that board like a present. And the reason why I like to do that is because sometimes you can see, particularly on an inside mount shade, sometimes you can see that board from the outside of your house. And I hate to see that, that raw wood. It looks so much nicer if your, your board is covered in fabric. So if you're gonna inside mount, cover your board with fabric. And you very simply wrap it like a present. So you just wrap the fabric around there, you do the ends just like a present, and then just staple it down. Okay, I did this wrong. I shouldn't have stapled that down because what I should have done is stapled the fabric onto the board and then covered it with that, but I forgot. I'm just measuring to make sure I'm mounting the board square. Because this is going to be mounted on an L bracket like that, and this is the front of the shade. So this is the way this goes. It'll hang like that. See, that's the top. Now we'll put the eye hooks down here, or the eye things down here, and the brackets. The screw eyes you install right in line with your row of rings. And I just hammered them in a little bit and then turned them in.
So here it is. I've got the Roman shade up, and as you can see, it's an outside, well, maybe you can't see. It's an outside mount. I did not mount it inside the window. I mounted it just underneath the ceiling. So now I have also just put a cleat in the window here. Let me show you that. There's the cleat in the window. And now I've got to pull the shade up and style it. Now, this is something that irks me because I've seen people online get Roman shades, order Roman shades from companies, and they go and they pull their shade up that's it and then they say what happened it doesn't look like the picture well you have to style it and you have to work the shade a little bit you first of all have to get the bottom of your shade level and you do that by pulling the strings individually and then once you've pulled them and it's level then you can tie a knot in this bunch of cords that you've got here so if I just pull this it's just gonna lift that side and I already broke one because I'm using this crappy lift cord and where I want it I want my fabric to come right to this mullion on the window. So I'm going to wrap this around the cleat and then style that a bit. Okay, so I'm going to get this folded the way I want it. Now I've got to pull this tighter. See, once I pull that, it'll pull that up. And then I can loosen this one up a bit so it's not high like that. But you've got to style your shade. And then once you have it styled, then you can take your steamer to it and steam it really well. And, and then every time you raise and lower it, go back perfectly the way it was. There she is all hung and styled. If you'd like to see the video on how to string the Roman shade, how to mount it and actually hang it, attach it to your wall, click on that video right here.